So yesterday I was away from Nottingham and I missed a really exciting piece of news, the most exciting piece of the news about the periodic table that's happened since we've started these videos. Yesterday it was announced that element 112 had finally been confirmed that it had been observed and therefore that the, it was time for the discoverers to choose the name for the element. And I wasn't here. But three people sent me emails with the website, so I knew about it before I got back. These elements with very high numbers are made synthetically with huge accelerators. You look at the atomic number of the element you want to make, in this case 112, and you choose two atoms so that their atomic numbers, when you add them together, <coughs> add up to 112. So the physicist in Darmstadt, when it was discovered, took lead, which is number 82, and if you add 30 to 82, you get 112. So they fired atoms of zinc. Zinc is um, element number 30, and they accelerated these atoms of zinc to very high speed and let them zap into a target of lead. And every so often, and very rarely, two of the nuclei, the ch positive charged mass at the centre of the atoms, fuse together. So you get a nucleus of element 112. But this is very rare, and they don't end up with a whole beaker of 112, but they observe these atoms by the way they decay. They give out gamma rays or um, other radioactive particles so that once they made the observation, there's a big discussion whether it was really right or not. And what happened yesterday was that the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, IUPAC, which decides on whether <coughs> an element has been found or not and what it should be called, um, came to the decision that this really had been discovered. Now, you can see at the periodic, in the periodic table, they have already got element 111, which has the almost unpronounceable name Röntgenium, which was named after Röntgen, the discoverer of X-rays, and now they have 112, and they can choose a name. Now, the element was discovered in Darmstadt, and they already have named an element here, number 110, Darmstadtium, after the place where these experiments have been done. So that name has gone. They've also used the name of Mendeleev and many of the other famous people like Rutherford, Einstein, Lorentz, Lawrence, and so on. So they've now got the point, whose name are they going to choose? Darmstadt is in Germany, not far from Frankfurt. Um, a bit further south. My grandfather worked there as a student in the 1890s, before the electron was even discovered. So very often people choose a name that is connected with a scientist in their country. So in the context of atoms, there is still the German physicist Heisenberg, who um, has discovered a principle, or invented a principle, do you call the uncertainty principle? Um, there's also Schrödinger, who invented the equation that describes the behavior of atoms in, um, or electrons in atoms. Schrödinger was an Austrian, so he may not be suitable for a German discovery. Then there are really quite important people who haven't yet been honored in the context of the atom. There's J.J. <coughs> Thompson, who discovered the electron, and James Chadwick, who discovered the neutron. But both of those are English, so I'm not sure whether they would do. The person that I rather fancy is the Greek, Democri <coughs> Democritus, who um, decided, or was the first one, to propose the existence of atoms. Two and a half, well, more than 2,000 years ago. And the... Um, idea that they came up with atoms, they didn't have these complicated machines we have nowadays. They said if you take an object like this, and if you cut it in half, 
and then you cut it in half again, and then you cut it in half again, and so on, eventually you're going to get to a stage where you can't cut it in half anymore. And so they decided logically that there must be something right at the bottom, which is very, very tiny, which you can't divide. I think is that it would be very nice and um, politically neutral to name the elements after a Greek philosopher many years ago, which would save all this national rivalry and would honour people who long before they had experiments and complicated methods like us had already made absolutely profound ideas about the nature of the atoms. It's the right of the inventors. I mean, if I had to put my money on a name, I think that I would probably go for Plancum because one of the other people who's not been um, honoured is Max Planck, who was one of the founders of um, quantum mechanics and was German. And therefore, I think that everybody in the world would be quite happy with the elements being called Plancum. As for the element itself, 112, it's in the periodic table in the group that begins with zinc and ends up with um, mercury, so that mercury, as you know, is a liquid. So this element might also be a liquid. Um, I don't know about its colour. It might well be a more golden colour, because just like cesium is more gold than <coughs> rubidium or potassium, it might be in the same way that element 112 may be a beautiful golden liquid, if we could ever make enough. Why, why, why can't we make enough? What happens? Well, the atoms, because they're so large, or, or the nucleus is so large, are very unstable. It's rather like one of these very big soap bubbles. And as you know, if you've ever blown one of these giant soap bubbles, it wobbles a bit and then often breaks up into two or more small ones. And the nucleus is just the same. It breaks up very easily and <coughs> the lifetime of most of these elements is a fraction of a second. And one of the principal interests in these, making these elements is actually to know how long they last. Because there is just a suspicion that somewhere in the really heavy elements, perhaps beyond 118, there might be an element which is unexpectedly stable. Yes, it's, up till now it has had a sort of provisional name that acknowledges that something has been observed and the IUPAC, this in, um, international union, has invented a system so that you can give any atom a name based on its number. You use an for one and bi, b for two, so this is an, an, b. But it's a dreadful name and I haven't heard any chemists ever use these names at all. I think in the context of chemistry, element 112 is an amusing incident, but it is not really going to change the fundamental nature of chemistry.